Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for this uh, workshop on perfecting your pitch in the job search. My name is Jody Hammer, and I am the Career Services Specialist with NPCA's Global Reentry Program. Happy to be with you here today to talk about this concept of pitching yourself throughout the, the job search. I myself am, am an RPCV, so I always love, um, I love my job. I get to work with, with RPCVs like you. So thank you for tuning in. Um, couple things before we get started. We, um, I want to apologize that I will not appear on screen still, sadly. My computer uh, camera is not working. Uh, so we're waiting for the new one to come in and uh, for the new laptop and hopefully I'll be back in action with actually being able to be present there um, and, and uh, talk to you uh, more live, if you will, rather than just my voice. So apologies for that. We do encourage you to put any questions that you do have throughout this, um, you know, the, the course of the event, just drop those into the chat box and we'll be sure to um, to add, you know, we'll be sure to address those. We should have plenty of time. I'm gonna be talking about several different ways that the pitch works and, and, and in the different parts of the job search, but I'm going to leave, I don't have a lot of slides. Um, I wanna make sure that we um, leave time for adequate questions. So please make sure that um, you just throw those questions in there. My colleague Lexi is going to be working behind the scenes. If I don't see the questions on my own when I'm presenting, she'll certainly uh, be helping me out. Um, so let's let's go ahead and, and dive into this, um, to this topic of perfecting your, your pitch. So your pitch in the job search is really your story, right? It's, um, it's, it's a story about you. It tells a brief story and it's you are the product, right? So when we think of the, the concept of a pitch, I don't know about you, but I think typically people think about sales, right? If any of you have been in sales, right? You, you develop your sales pitch for whatever product it is that you're selling, right? And you want to develop the best pitch possible so that you can sell the most and whether it's make the most money or, you know, whatever, achieve success in, in, your, um, in your job. So thinking of it like that, um, I urge you to think about uh, the job search and your pitch in the job search, you are the product. So you're basically developing a story, a brief story or a few different ones because of course you may be pitching yourself to different markets, to different kinds of jobs as well. Um, so some of you may have you know, multiple ones certainly, right? But your pitch is what really kind of, um, it, it proves or, or it, it um, what do I wanna say? It hooks them, right? It sells you, or I like to think of it as, it's what hooks them on you. It hooks them on wanting to learn more about you. If you have a well-crafted pitch, it's gonna help them um, you know, latch onto you and be more like, oh, I wanna learn more about this person, or this is somebody of interest to me because of X, Y, Z. So while a lot of people think of the pitch, and I don't know when, tell me in the chat box here, um, if uh, when, you, when you signed up for this session, were you expecting it to focus um, on the elevator pitch, exclusively pretty much the elevator pitch, the, the whole session? Just put yes or no, or you can vote yes or no, and Lexi will uh, be able to share with me kind of the outcome. But were you thinking it was mostly going to be on the elevator pitch? Um, yes or no. I just want to make sure that I can. Um, okay, good. So I've got yes and no so far. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm going to structure it correctly um, to meet your needs, right? Um, so we are going to definitely focus on the elevator pitch. And that is a big part of this presentation in terms of the talk and how to do it and, and how to do it correctly and all of that. But I want you to realize up front that the pitch your pitch in the job search is much greater. You use your pitch in many aspects, not only the elevator pitch, which we're gonna talk about what that is and all of that in a moment, but also in every other aspect of the job. When you're doing your resume, you're pitching yourself for that job and you're tailoring it in such a way that you, the product, right, are looking the best you can with relation to whatever job you are applying for. In incorporating those key words, right, of that job search and all those other tricks that you do in um, in a normal resume, but then other ways that that there's some areas more than others that your pitch is really key 
for resumes, it's kind of the beginning, right? Your, your key qualifications and then your experience too. So we'll be talking about that as well as in the cover letter, you know, you're pitching yourself, your cover letter is your story. I mean, that is you in a nutshell. And it's not just re, you know, regurgitating what's on your resume. You're going to be telling more of a personal story, hopefully, and trying to hook them right up front and, and get them interested in reading more of that cover letter. Because again, you know, in the resume and the cover letter, you basically have generally six to seven seconds for them to really get hooked or not, right? That's not a lot of time. Trust me. So, so you're going to be using your pitch in many, many different ways. So I'm going to be trying to talk a little bit about each of them. But as I have the graphic here, it's kind of like a piece of the puzzle, right? And so let's start with the elevator pitch. And I, I, I like the graphic on the left, you know, graphic, we'll call it A, right? Um, where you have the person in the elevator preparing to make a pitch, you know, like a baseball pitch, right? And then you have the right graphic that has people, two people connecting in an elevator, right? Um, while I love the, you know, the um, ingest, you know, the, the elevator pitch, you know, graphically and very literally, that would be what it is. But what the elevator pitch really is, is that, that um, those opportunities where you can connect with another professional, it doesn't have to be in front of an elevator or in an elevator exclusively. It certainly can be. And the reason they call it the elevator pitch is more to do with, um, you know, the length of time that you have, like up to 30 seconds, right, to make that connection. And that's, you know, based on, you know, how long it generally would take for an elevator to be called, to get on, to get to whatever, you know, another floor. So you don't have a long time. So I think they, they say elevator pitch is what kind of took as, you know, that way of keeping it short. What could you fit in in the span of an elevator ride with a stranger you know, that you happen to, you know, meet. So a lot of times when I, when I've talked in the past, when I used to do, you know, workshops with you know, returning volunteers and such, um, you know, uh, as part of the career center at Peace Corps headquarters, when we had one, um, I would, we would, we would actually, you know, we would like demo one, right. But we would also be, be talking about how, you know, you might meet somebody at, you know, a networking, a, a networking event, or maybe it's a conference or, you know, a topic that you're really interested in and that you want to work in. So you're at this, you know, conference and you, you saw the keynote speaker talk. And, you know, at the end, as you're leaving, you just so happen to see that keynote speaker waiting in front of the elevator bank or, you know, right, you know, wherever. And, and wow, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to make that elevator pitch, to connect with that person, right? So taking advantage of, you know, what we're going to talk about here today, you could apply that and you could approach them and say, you know, something like, you know, uh, you know, Dr. Smith, thank you so much for that, that, you know, talk on whatever the topic is, right? I really found that, you know, enlightening. I've studied that same concept myself in my graduate program that I've just finished. You know, I, you know, I'd love to learn a little more about your, your experience in that at some point. Wondering if you might have a few minutes of your time at your convenience to chat a little bit. Like, you know, that's, that's more trying to get an informational interview, right? You haven't pit, you've pitched a little bit of yourself, right? But you might, sometimes you might pitch a little bit more, right? And I usually encourage Peace Corps volunteers to include Peace Corps in their pitch because it's such an interesting one that, believe it or not, not everyone is a Peace Corps volunteer, right? I mean, we are a big crowd and, and um, such, but there's a lot of non-RPCVs, right? And they're oftentimes very interested in Peace Corps. They're like, wow, you were in Peace Corps. How cool. My, my daughter was in, or who knows what the you know connection is. And that can be a connection right there. So that's what we're going to start talking about okay um with you know with the elevator uh pitch and and i have a graphic here um that i copied in that i found that i i like i like pretty well i, I think it's a pretty comprehensive one i'll add a little bit to it as well but we're talking about pitching yourself in the elevator you know and and you know so the elevator you know speech how how can you pitch yourself and what what goes into that right so you you um you know, you, you want to be personable, right? And, and, you know, really now, you know, we talk a lot about this when you're doing in-person, it's hard. I get it right now. We can't really do the in-person. There's not really the networking events. There's not really other things. So it's all online or, you know, LinkedIn, which we'll talk about briefly in a little bit, but um, so it's a little harder. You don't have that person you're speaking to. It's more writing something, right? 
So, you know, you, you want to, you know, relate to them and that, that human connection, you know, when it is in person, that's great, right? Just having that smile, warmth, you know, you, you know, just exude, you know, that warmth and genuine, you know, friendliness and, and, you know, interest in other people, like that's key. Um, that can go a long way when you are at events and in, in terms of making people comfortable with approaching you or you approaching them and, and being, you know, invited into whatever conversation and, you know, talking, you know, and, and being comfortable. And I know it's not comfortable. It's something that definitely takes practice. Um, and, you know, some people are more comfortable than others. And, and you know, if, if you are, you know, more of an introvert and, you know, it might be less comfortable for you to be approaching somebody at, you know, like a physical event, but I, I urge you to, you know, do those kinds of things. And um, sometimes you can have, like, you can go with a buddy, but it's not to like, just be together. It's to push yourself to not be together and to make other connections and things like that. But hopefully we'll do an, 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 one more on the in-person um, elevator pitch as well and and talking about that once we're able to get out and, and do more of, of that so uh, more more on that but regardless when you're when you're doing whether it's through email or through LinkedIn or whatever you know you you want to be personable you know and and brief um, you know it's it's not a long you know like people sometimes think well I'll just write it all out and then I'll memorize it that's going to come across really scripted so I generally recommend that when you're doing your elevator pitch and you're trying to think about it like get the points down that you want to share and memorize those points. Like these are the three points that I'm going to be, you know, sentences like here, it talks about maybe three sentences, right? That's not a, you know, all or nothing. It has to be three sentences. You might have four sentences and it might be shorter sentences, who knows, right? But in general, look at it being, you know, a little, you know, three sentences or less, right? So, um, say, you know, pointing out what makes you different or unique, right? Or, or what you bring, like what you're, you know, maybe, you know, whatever, if, if you are working in something, you could certainly say, you know, I'm, I've been working, I have, you know, three years of experience working in the field of da, 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 and I'm, you know, currently exploring opportunities in whatever, you know, I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to bring, you know, my whatever skills, XYZ skills, you know, and that's what brought me to this, you know, networking event. I mean, like, you know, and, and then, then it allows them to be able to kind of, you know, be like, oh, wow, you know, I, my, you know, whoever worked in that field and, and that's actually a really good field to get into. And, you know, it can be like a nice engaging. What you don't want to do, obviously, is, you know, come up and say, hi, I'm Jody Hammer and I'm looking for a job and here's my resume. Can you actually send this to everyone you know? And I mean, you're not going to do that. I know you wouldn't. But um, you don't want it to be them thinking you're using them. You want it to be a very conversational, like very just, you know, um, you know, sharing information and, you know, getting to know them as well a little bit, right? If, you know, when you're in the person one, but when you're in these, like where you're sending out, you know, requests, you know, LinkedIn helps you make that pretty concise because you have certain character limits that, you know, if you don't know them, if you're not connected to them already, when you're trying to get connections, which again, we'll talk about later in a, in a little bit, um, but they help you be, be very brief. You, you don't even have probably time for hardly three sentences. So um, you need to really be concise. And, um, and then, you know, like what, you know, what, what's interesting about you, right? It's not, it's, 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 um, you know, it, it's, not about you as like, I'm this and I need and I want and I'm looking and I'm, you know, you could certainly put out there if whatever and, you know, what your skill set is and, you know, what you're, you know, somewhat, you know, the accomplishments and what you're, you know, looking to apply to a new job, but you don't want to be all about, you don't want it to be all about me, 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 I, 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 this is what I do. And I, I, you know, that, that just is that that's, it's boring for them. Right. So it's more about them not about you. And a lot of times that's true too, when you're talking in the cover letter, right? When you're writing your cover letter and your resume and you're really wanting to, this is all about them. And you're going to be trying to, you know, describe yourself in a way that shows them that the unique things you bring are going to be, you know, this is how I could help your organization. This is, you know, I welcome the opportunity to apply my specialized expertise in da, 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 and five years of research experience in, you know, helping your, uh, you know, uh, organization uh, make whatever, you know, improve in whatever way. So, um, so it's, it's, it, it, and you want to be memorable. So it's sometimes less is more. So instead of, okay, how much can I fit into 30 seconds that they talk about with the 30 second elevator pitch, right? Um, they talk sometimes more than that about, 
you know, what, like be memorable. So, so making some kind of a statement, you know, could be your, your Peace Corps experience, or it could be, you know, somehow you are, I've been interested in your company since, you know, uh, whatever, since a child, when I used to see the, you know, whatever it is, you, just, you know, if there's any kind of, you know, story like that, and, and that can be really helpful as well. So I want to stop here for a moment and see if there are specific questions on the elevator pitch itself and, you know, how to craft the elevator pitch. Um, yeah. So are there any, Lexi, I don't think I see any yet in the, in the Zoom, right? Let's see, chat area so none yet. what's that none yet okay so if you have them oh there's one that just came in maybe that's a question i presume let's see i think i need some examples or workshopping rachel yeah so um i'm i'm actually sending you um your you're gonna get you know what i always send out and um one of the best ones i think that i'm going to be including is one by indeed where they talk about the elevator pitch and like what it consists of. And then here are examples. And there are, there are examples they give for your in-person networking, for example, right? Separate and apart from a, you know, a meeting, um, you know, in a job, like trying to make your, you know, your pitch in a job and such. And you're, you're going to hear me make more examples here too, as we go on. But um, I'm going to be sending you that and it has, you know, they have many different um, samples that are, that are shown there, right? So it really depends on what type, like what type are you interested in? Are you interested in the type for networking online or are you interested in examples of or an example of the type where you're meeting somebody at some networking type of event and you know what what what, what type are you interested in for an example you're okay you're saying you're very wordy so brevity's not my friend i love it i love it verbose um okay yeah so well and and so your struggle is going to be or rachel your challenge i should say not your struggle but it will be maybe a challenge for you as you as you say is to simplify for for yourself right um you don't have to tell the whole story like everything about right and you can't you know for example when you're when you're mentioning to somebody that you just returned from serving in peace corps in whatever country you know in ecuador where i was working with you know in the you know um rural you know public health you know doing you know whatever you were doing but you can't tell all of the things i mean in addition to that you probably did your as most volunteers do some sort of like either helping some kids with English or a play group or something like that, you're not going to have time to go into all of that. You're going to have to kind of give that overview that like, it's kind of like the, I don't know, you know, the thousand feet, you know, view versus, you know, when you're, when you're in it, um, you're not going to be able to include everything, but just enough to get them like hooked. So for example, if you were, um, if, if you were in, you know, a networking type of, um, you know, situation where, you know, you're, you're trying to, um, you know, you're, you're trying to get like, you know, more information, you know, about, about an organization or something like that, you know, you, you know, you might say, you know, like you might include, and let me, let me see, I think I have here, let me just see real quick. Um, I, you might include, you know, the, something about your, like your cell, your background, right? Um, like what you're doing now or what your most recent background was. Maybe it's that you've recently returned from Peace Corps, been evacuated, get that in there. That is a great, I, I know it was a terrible experience and it still is. Yeah. For many, it's not fun, but you are hanging in there and you're proving your resilience and all of that. But here's the thing. When you put when you reference that being evacuated from you know your peace corps service as part of the global whatever you know pandemic evacuation people feel for you it's like oh my gosh you all had to come back wow like that's a that and that's a good place to have them in they're like then more um committed to you in a sense it's more like oh they feel bad you know it's like oh wow it it, it hooks them in a sense right but you're not going to be able to tell your whole experience because I know you all did a lot of things, right? When you're at, you know, when you're in Peace Corps for any, you know, uh, amount of time and such, you, you certainly do a lot of different things and you're not going to be able to go through all of those. But if you reference, you know, maybe you were working in, you know, what, whatever it was, you know, rural, 
you know, agricultural, whatever, um, or whatever your, your program was, fisheries and, and helping them develop, you know, better diets through, you know, raising, you know, tilapia, whatever it is, right? But if you're trying to make it more applicable, because sometimes you have those real niche assignments and maybe that's not at all related, or so you think to what you want to do, right? Yes, doing fisheries in an area, you know, um, there aren't a lot of those programs left, but but doing, you know, fisheries and such, you might not see how that relates to, you know, you're working in a nonprofit where you're, you know, doing administrative, like organizing, you know, work and team, you know, that kind of stuff, teamwork. Well, fact of the matter is when you're doing fisheries and stuff, you have to basically sell the community, right? You have to sell the community on, on the concept, why it's important and why it makes sense, right? Get them on board. So that's like leveraging your, you know, the, the community and, you know, and, and leading spearheading a process of whether it's writing for funds, you know, if you did like any kind of, um, you know, of your, um, you know, you did any, uh, you know, the spa grants, the, the, what is it, small project assistance grants, those are USAID funded grants, you could even say, you know, I, including, you know, uh, writing a, writing and implementing the USAID funded grant, that's impressive, those kinds of things, you can talk about that more than the nitty gritty of putting the fish, dumping them into the area, digging the trenches where, I mean, right, so, it really comes down to, I think, um, picking, Rachel, you know, what you're going to say and, and writing it out. I would encourage you to actually, if you feel like you're wordy, actually write it out on a paper, right? And then read it once, like say it, you know, and, and you can look at it, you know, cheat sheet, say it, time yourself how it, how it sounds, right? And how long it is. And then go back and say, okay, it's still a little long. It's still 45 seconds or so. Let me see what I, what could I, you know, how could I shorten these sentences slightly? Maybe I could leave out a sentence, you know, and it's not just that you go in either all the time when you're doing the networking, the in-person or even phone or, you know, whatever. It's not even that what you say in those 30 seconds is all you're going to be able to say. It's that initial pitch and that initial connection, right? So, so you might very well, you know, pause and then you hear more, you know, how about you? What is your background? Oh, interesting. And you're you're kind of going back and forth, right? So think about that too. You don't have to get all of it um, in. Am I like your comment? Same, Rachel. I feel like I'm all over the place sometimes. Absolutely. And you know, part of that I think is is part of that's normal, you know, as you're nervous, when you get nervous and you're trying to, you know, make the most of opportunities, and you probably, you know, it it you know, your phrases escape you or, you know, you just uh, feel like you're fumbling. And, and, you know, that's, I think, normal. I think, you know, put on top of all the normal, normal parts, the regular ones, the extra stress that everyone's under right now with regard to, you know, COVID-19 and, you know, maybe living with your parents, which is not where you envisioned yourself at this place in your life. You know, who knows? I mean, it, there's many different stresses on top that I think can, can contribute it to it being um, a little bit, um, extra stressful and and such but i promise you with practice you'll get better um you know better and better at it and more comfortable at it and i just look forward to the day that you know we're able to open up and actually have some in person events and some other things you know career fairs in person you know those kinds of things that you can actually you know use these skills that you're practicing right now so let's go ahead and move on i don't see any other questions and we can certainly come back to any of those later as well so using your pitch on LinkedIn, and, and I, I preach about LinkedIn a lot. Ooh, whoa, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I, I preach about LinkedIn a lot on um, to, to clients and in my different workshops because, I mean, quite honestly, it is the biggest um, and you know, best networking tool that you have to reach a lot of different people. Um, you know, with 600 million users, 200 countries, it's very international. It's very, it's, it's, it's big. Um, so you can, you can easily connect with people, right? So you use your pitch for your connections when you're trying to expand your connections, because that's important. Um, how many of you, are there, are there any of you who've just, um, maybe just more recently joined LinkedIn? So you don't have as many of the, um, of connections yet? Anyone? 
Um, I'm, I'm asking only because you really want to, one of the things that you want to focus on if you are new to LinkedIn, and even if you're not new to, new to LinkedIn, you want to get more connections. Because the more connections you have, the bigger your um, web of alliance or your, right, your, your kind of web of connections of people who, you know, know you or are in touch with you at least, that you can then meet other people through. It's kind of like the six degrees of separation that you hear about, you know, uh, boy, you know, through your six degrees of separation, you know, Kevin Bacon, that was the big thing with, you know, Kevin Bacon, the star, right, um, Footloose star. Um, so if you, you could, you, you probably are connected with some pretty, pretty big people there between six degrees, right? I mean, like it's, it's, um, so LinkedIn is great to, to help you do that. And so it's pretty easy to do when you, you want to use your pitch when you're, you know, when, when you're doing a friend connection request, right? And, um, and the way that you do that, you know, you, you don't, the way you don't do it is use their, their um, generic, I'd like to add you to my professional network. That's the generic. If you don't personalize your, your request, that's what's going to go out. And let me tell you, a lot of people don't even respond to those. They don't know, it doesn't give them any information on who you are. And they don't have time necessarily to open up and like do this whole thing, right? So you want to hook them with something. If you're an RPCV and, and they're an RPCV, you want to say that right away in your first line. Hey, I'm a fellow RPCV having just returned from Ethiopia or wherever, right? Um, and, and so right there, there's that hook. They're an RPCV, you're an RPCV. Guess what? You're family. You are, I mean, you are part of the great family of RPCVs, right? Return volunteers. And that's a great family to be in because we're all over and we're connected by that same kind of concept and commitment that you know we demonstrated in, in Peace Corps. So these are people who are most probably going to you know be willing to help you and, and want to help in any way that they can, right? So if you put that right away in your pitch, like, you know, if you don't know the person, if they're not a, a connection already, first degree connection, you have a limited number of spaces. If you don't have the expanded version or premium version, they call it on um, LinkedIn, um, without the premium version, the, the, the free version this is, um, you have like 125 characters. So you don't have a long time, you don't have a lot of space to like do your expanded elevator pitch, right? But you can suss that down to like the, the, the essential, for example, something like, hi, I'm a fellow RPCV having recently returned from Ecuador. Um, would love to connect with you, you know, would love to connect with you professionally, or, you know, I'm, I'm exploring, you know, I'm interested in, in connecting with people, you know, in the, in the field, if you want to say that, but I wouldn't even say that when you're doing the, the initial connection, I would keep it so short that it would literally say like, Hey, I'm a fellow RPCV having served in, in Ecuador. Um, always great to connect with fellow RPCVs, you know, would love to connect with you professionally, something like that. That's it. Like it could be even two sentences, leave out that middle one that I had, right? And so you just want them to connect with you. That's all you want. Once they connect with you, that's when you're gonna go in for more of that like detailed ask, what your real ask is, because you can't really get that out there in that first. This is gonna be more of your pitch, your expanded pitch, I should say, right? Once they do um, respond to you. And once they respond to you and accept you, then you don't have any space limitations. Don't make it hugely long but you don't have those, those tight restrictions, right? So then you can say, and I like to start when I've asked somebody for a connection and they've responded and said, yes, I like to respond back with something like, you know, thanks for connecting with me because they did connect with you, right? Sure, you initiated it, but they connected with you to accept it. So when you say, thanks for connecting with me, it's always great to, you know, whatever, you know, meet, meet other RPCVs, and then, then you could go into maybe what your pitch is, you know, having just returned, I'm look, I'm, ex, I'm currently exploring opportunities in the whatever field, um, wondering if we might be able to connect, something like that. Does that make sense? I'm going to plug in my here a little bit, make sure we don't head off. All righty. So any, let's see in the chat box. 
I've been on it for 10 years, maybe, but never invest time in it. Yep. Well, Becky, a lot of people are like that. And especially if they're not doing a job search, um, I think it has become such an important part of the job search that if you are doing a job search now, um, it is pretty important to kind of get back on it, brush it up a little bit, and then, you know, use it for what it's worth because it's a tool to help you. And honestly, their free tool is just fine. I mean, you know, the, the premium allows you to have the no limits on, you know, like the length, right, character limits when you're reaching out to new people. Uh, it has some other advantages or, or things that, you know, you pay for, but you pay quite a bit for it. Oh, you can do unlimited searches. That's right. Um, so things like that. But honestly, you can get around those little glitches uh, fairly easily without pain. And it's it's not cheap. I think it's something like 30 bucks a month. Or I mean, I mean, it, it, I just don't think most RPCBs need to invest that in it. If you're a recruiter or something, yes, it makes sense because they have special recruiter tools. But what you might do right now, if you're doing a job search, you can actually, they'll always offer you this like one month free premium so that you can, you know, they hope to hook you on it. Well, if you go in with the mentality of I'm going to use this to the best that I can, I'm going to use all those special features and I'm going to do like a great job of really, you know, connecting with during this month and then cancel it before the end of the month, you won't be charged. If you forget to cancel, they'll start just charging you every month. So you want to make sure that you are dedicated to canceling it if you decide you're going to cancel it. Otherwise, it'll just start um, start charging you. So that's um, we have separate uh, webinars on LinkedIn. So I'm going to leave it at that unless there's some um, questions. I did see somebody said I've you know have about 120. That that's great, right? Um, someone said 250. Someone said only 250. And it's I mean yes, it's great. I mean 300 plus is awesome. I mean you know if you can get you know, and working toward the 500 plus, that's great, but, but that's a good, you've got a good amount right now. I mean, 299, Ariana, that's, that's great. Um, that, that, that's fabulous. You want to have at least 50 because until you get 50, there's certain things that are impacted. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think, I believe it's with your searching for people and such. Um, and the more people that you have in your network, the more uh, results you're going to get when you do these you know, tailored, you know, see all the filters and, and tailor them. Because really what you care about most is looking at past employer, Peace Corps, put Peace Corps in there and current employer, put whatever industry, you know, the employer, whatever you're looking at. And you're going to get all these people who, you know, are probably most of them return Peace Corps volunteers. Some would be maybe former Peace Corps staff, but that's great. Those are great connections and they want to help you. So, so great. Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and move on. Um, talk a little bit about pitching yourself in the resume. So the resume is key as well, right? And it, it is, it's very important. And we all hear you need to tailor your resume for each job. And I totally agree with that. And don't worry, it's not as hard as that sounds because what you can do is, you know, keep, you know, your, you, whenever you're applying for a new job, just look at the job that you'd applied for before most recently, that was most similar to that job, start with that resume and then save a copy with the different, you know, name and, and start the new one. So that way you don't have to start from ground zero. So hopefully that won't take you quite as long, but really where you're pitching yourself in your entire resume, right? And so the format, the, the, like how it looks is, is important, right? But the content, like what you, given you have generally six to seven seconds, right? to really hook them to see if you're going to go into that to be considered further pile or the circular file, AKA trash, as I call it. So you want to make sure that you make it to that additional, you know, review and such. So I talk a lot about using key qualifications and this is where you really pitch yourself a lot in your, in your resume, right? Now, a lot of people will just start, they used to start with an objective. I hate objectives because objectives for a while, they were like a long time ago, they were the thing to do. And, but, but it ended up that everyone was putting something generic, like a rewarding position with fill in the blank of the company you're applying to with opportunities for growth and advancement. What does that tell them? It tells them the job you're applying for. It doesn't tell them anything about you anything about what you bring. So I, so most people said, oh no, objectives, don't even do objectives. So then people just started hopping into their experience. Well, I'm a fan of the key qualifications as a way to really help, help pitch yourself to 
the job because in the key qualifications, right, this is the first category they see. Um, so it's before your experience or your education, right? So as that first category, I think if you can, if you can hook them with some, some pithy, you know, like targeted, you know, bullets. And again, I would recommend that you make a huge laundry list of key qualifications that describe you. You could just put the ones that you've used on all your different resumes, right? And have them, and you can go to that and you can add to it anytime you come up with a new one, right? To make it super easy so that you don't have to rehash trying to, you know, say the same thing. But you're only going to generally include, you know, I generally say two to three, maximum four. And I'm a big fan of the first bullet being, and what I call it, it, it's the formula I have here, right? Adjective that describes you plus a noun, right? Adjective and noun that describe you with, and then if you have your graduate degree, put that in there, that's fine with, and you might not even mention what it is if it's not at all related, but you put your master's in there if you have it there, that way you get that education up if you're looking for, you know, that without putting education as your first header, which screams new grad, no experience. So I'm never a fan generally of putting education first, unless you're competing for a program that is education. It, it's one that you're in school when you're going for that kind of thing. So, but not to get off track here. So adjective and a noun that describes you with, and if you have an MBA with MBA and X years of specialized experience. So it could be including, and you're going to say what that is, right? With three years of specialized experience in program management, monitoring and evaluation and whatever. You're gonna tailor that to the job that you're going for and highlight the skills and experience that they're looking for because you want them when they start scanning your resume to find those key words and be like, ooh, this looks like a great candidate. Let's put her in that to be considered further pile, right? Does that make sense? I hope. So I, I have an example there that I just put, you know, if you're, you know, bilingual, you know, bilingual is a great thing these days, right? If you are, um, you know, bilingual professional, Spanish, English with MPH and five years of specialized experience in da, 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 whatever, right? So that's your first bullet. And then your second and or your third bullet would be something additional relevant to that job you're going for. Again, you're pitching yourself specifically to this job that has these, you know, requirements and you want to make sure to be able to do that um, successfully. So, so it's, it's, that's the first one, right? So the other ones might be, you know, it could be, um, you know, over, you know, and, and, and it's not always quantifying with, um, you know, with years, but it might be, you know, you might say, you know, over three years of, you know, da, 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 whatever experience, or it could be proven you know, leadership skills or whatever they're looking for, right? Proven X, Y, Z skills as developed through leading diverse team of five in whatever. So, so, or, or as, you know, as developed through, however, you're going to say, this is more of your, like, these are my main skills that I bring to this job and you want them to see those that are really relevant. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Do you have any questions on, on key quals before I proceed into the experienced ones? I'm going to go on to this one. And then if you have any questions, just dump them in the chat box. I have my chat open too. So we can, we can get through those as well. Professional experience. So incorporating skill statements um, into your bullets. So a lot of people end up when they're doing their bullets, they'll, they'll say like, you know, and I always talk about ED action verbs, right? But they'll put like, you know, planned and implemented a da, 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 da whatever it is. And, and that's fine. You did that. That's great. Um, but what skills do you develop? you know, in, in, or use in doing that. So it might be, as the example here is, demonstrated strong leadership skills in spearheading team of seven diverse professionals in creating and implementing agency-wide training on, right? You could even have reaching 500, you know, people. I mean, numbers pop and numbers are easily read when they're, when they're not spelled out. So just on a side note here, I generally recommend, and I, I'm all about when you write normally like papers and such, you put the, you spell out the number and especially under 10, right? Under 10, spell it out above 10 or 10 and over. You can, you don't have to necessarily, right? But in a resume, because it is not, this is not an example of, of like, um, proper punctuation and proper whatever. We're not even using a, 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 you know, a subject, right? You're not saying I, don't do that, please, in, in your resume, leave that off. Start with the ED action verbs, you know, those, you know, oversaw and implemented, um, that kind of thing. So, um, all right, moving on. All 
Okay. So um, you also, your, your key, um, key skills and certifications, you can have either incorporated into your experiences, or you could even have a header that has, you know, skills, relevant skills and certifications. Some people are doing a resume style where now you have maybe it broken down on the front page where you have kind of bullets on the left that are little, it's like a maybe three inch column. And then you have the, the bulk of your resume in, on the right. Okay. So um, that is definitely, um, th that is definitely okay as well. Include your outcomes. That's important. So, you know, like I said, resulting in, or when you said earlier, like demonstrated strong leadership skills in doing whatever, now you're looking more at the outcomes of whatever you, you did. So you might do what I said and, and begin with, you know, um, you know, prepared and implemented five-part training, da, 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 resulting in a 25% increase in, right? That, it, it tells up so what? That's what the outcomes are, right? Think of it to yourself as your so what statement. So you can sometimes have that at the end, like I just did, right? Resulting in a 25% increase in whatever. Or sometimes think about, swap it up. You don't always want it to have resulting in, resulting in, resulting in. Sometimes you can change that and have the, the outcome or that so what at the beginning. Achieved a 25% increase in da 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 through... So it's just swapping it up. So it just, I, I like that as well. So questions on any of these with resume, happy to answer them before we move on to cover letters. Um, if you do have any um, on resume, feel free to either um, have them in the chat box, or I think we have a small enough group that you could even unmute if you wanted to. All righty then. Well, I shall move on to cover letters and just put them in the uh, in the chat box then if you have them later. Um, we're going to talk about pitching yourself in cover letters. And this is really important. Um, cover letters, the cover letter is your story, right? It's your your story of, of why you should be considered for this job, of what you bring, yeah, and, and who you are, right? But it's not just all about me, 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 me. I do this, I do that, I bring this, I... No, it's it's much more focused on what what you what what you contribute, what you could contribute to their company, how you could help make their lives easier. That's what it's really all about, right? So let's talk about in here. You have, you know, um, the recommendations in general, right? So I I talk about a creative start, right? Um, and, and, you know, and it, this is in addition to paying attention to all the grammar and all the, you know, whatever you want to make sure that it's all done, right. And you're using your resources, you know, as shown here, all, making it all good, but you also want to make sure that it's more of a creative start. So your opening paragraph, you want it to catch the, the attention and, and, you know, introduce yourself. So your traditional start might be, and, and I have a sample here that I'm going to actually share with you. But your, your, you know, the traditional one might be more like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm writing to apply for the program manager position, you know, um, as, as mentioned, or as, you know, as posted on wherever you found it, or if someone referred you, this is a great place to put that right as referred by Sammy Smith, you know, or whatever, by, by that person, because if it's someone that they know that so you want to get that right up front, right. Um, you know, the traditional is more, you know, that, and then, you know, because of my three years of da -da 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 experience in this and proven whatever skills I'm well qualified for and, and most interested in this opportunity. And then you go into your other paragraphs and you explain yourself. So that's kind of the generic one, right? But honestly, if you can be more creative, I think it's better because they get a ton that are like that. And it's not that it's wrong, but um, people, yeah, you, you just, you, you can probably get more traction by being creative, right? It's going to catch their interest, right? Now, and some of you are probably saying, oh, I was told that people don't even use cover letters, so I don't even do them anymore. And, and you know, totally your decision. I'm a, I'm a big fan of a cover letter because even if they don't ask for it, it shows A, that you go above and beyond and that you can actually write and that you can, you know, like do a good job, you know, um, in written format, um, so all those things are helpful. It doesn't hurt you. It never hurts you to do a cover letter unless they ask you specifically not to, and then you do one. You don't want to do that. You want to follow their guidance, right? 
but starting it with maybe a story or making it memorable, right? So as I was mentioning a little bit earlier, even, you know, maybe, maybe this is a company that you have, you know, maybe it's Facebook, the company, and you have grown up with it. And, and you're, you know, so you, you've been mesmerized ever since you first were introduced at the age of, you know, whatever. And, it, and, and, and so that, I mean, that shows that, wow, they really like our company. They're, you know, making it kind of really, um, pertinent and 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 a, a sentence that's creative a, a paragraph an entry paragraph um, can really help you help go a long way and then focusing on what like I said the, the second and third paragraphs more what you bring to that position you know um, not I mean it's okay to want the job and you want them to know that you want the job but not like I'm really looking for a job in this area and because I have this background I you know I want to be you know considered I mean you, you know and I'm looking for this and I want a company that has you know it's it's really about them and how you would help them okay great oh nice um uh thank you Ariana I appreciate that uh, one of the one of the resources that we shared in another um in another event, um, another we did on creative starts and co cover letters. We did on cover letter writing, and it's by the Muse. Yep, thirty-one attention grabbing cover letter examples. You guys can just um, copy that right now, like open it or whatever, and keep it open. Or you can also, and I do urge you before we finish up here shortly, to definitely make sure that you um, uh, copy the chat, like save the chat, and you can do that really easily at the bottom um, of the chat box where you have the little box and the little three dots. Just click in there and save chat. And that way you'll have that. Thank you, Ariana, uh, for, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Um, great. And then focus on the relevant experience, not the unrelated stuff, right? The relevant experience. You can't write your whole, you're not going to write your whole resume in this cover letter. You're not going to have space for it. Um, they don't want that because they can look at your resume. So you want to make it a little different. I have a, this sample is actually from Indeed and it's just to, you know, and, and like I say here, I'm excited to apply for it. There's nothing wrong with saying that I don't think I'm excited to apply for, or I am thrilled to apply for it. To me, that just shows that you're, you know, instead of I'm writing to apply for it, just, that sounds a little more like, it, it's just not as like, hey, I'm, I'm really, I'm excited about this. And I think that's perfectly fine, right? Um, yeah, so I've been programming websites and using CSS da, 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 since I was in middle school. So it's always been a passion of mine. They're creating that story about themselves, right? That makes sense that that really and, and here I even love like, I've, you know, I've also been intrigued by your company since it won. You're showing what you, kn you know about them most innovative at the National Web Development Award. It shows that you've done your research or that you really do like, you know, you're not just saying this You're you're walking the walk, you know, you know, you really like this company. So um, I, I think it's, you know, I, so when I saw this, I knew I had to apply. Like, I love that. I, I, it's just, it's, it's different than that traditional. And it tells, you know, you're not always going to have that personal experience of I've been following this since, you know, I was 10, whatever. But when you can put it in, or maybe, you know, I, you know, maybe you learned about your, you first learned about the company, you know, a couple of years ago. And when you, you know, and, and you've been, you've been following since and have been very impressed with their da -da -da -da, latest achievements in, it just shows that you, you care. And that you know about the company. So I think that's good as well. And then here, you know, the second one, really, the second paragraph goes more into, you know, in my previous role, I built, you know, it's talking about what you did, right? I built a website completely from scratch from a recently rebanded business, both ahead of schedule and within budget, like telling what made you unique or special about that. I did it both you know, ahead of schedule, within budget, that's not easy, like those kinds of things, right? And and how they did it, my favorite part of web design, you're just really getting insight into this person and their their work and the quality of their work, right? Um, and, and then it has some stats in it. You know, I, I, improved the click, I improved the click through rate by 10% and da, 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 da. I didn't copy the whole one, um, but, uh, but this, because the, what's after this is basically then, you know, the closure, a paragraph where you're asking for, um, you know, the, you know, you're asking for an interview, basically, you know, I think it's fine to say, you know, in the, in the end, you know, I would welcome the chance for an interview at which time I, we could further discuss my, you know, proven skills and experience or passion for whatever your organization or this position, you know, thanks so much sincerely, right? Regards. Um, so that's, that's getting it into the, into there, which is great. If you have any cover letter questions right now, please put them in if they're related to kind of making that pitch. And I'm going to just continue, um, on to the interview while you're putting those in, because I want to make sure that we have to talk a little bit about the interview as well. There's just a lot to cover in this webinar, um, when you're talking, pitching yourself and, and, you know, above and beyond just that, that elevator pitch type of thing. So almost always, right. Your first question is going to be 
some variation of tell us about yourself, tell, tell us about your background and why you're interested in this opportunity, whatever it is, right? So you want to be able to come back, you're, you're making your pitch in that first, in that question, right? This is where you're going to be putting that, that, you know, the content of basically what has it says here, who, you know, who you are and why you're interested, why they should care, what you bring, what sets you apart or makes you unique, right? And, and what you're looking for, why you're interested in this opportunity, right? So I always say to people, even if they don't ask, even if they don't include, you know, after the tell us about yourself and why you're interested in this opportunity, I would strongly recommend that you answer it, including that. And at the end of whatever you say, you know, well, I first, you know, whatever you're saying in your, your pitch there, right. You know, who you are, your brief introduction, you know, with what you've been doing and why you're interested in this opportunity, all of that, then um, to say, and that's why I'm so interested in this opportunity. It seems a perfect fit for me, given my X, Y, Z, da, da, da. And I'd really value the opportunity to step in and help you with moving this out and unveiling this new initiative, whatever it is, right? That's closing it with that censure, right? You know, like what I could bring, how I could help you, right? I'd welcome the chance to do that. So, um, so that I think is a, is a, a good way to start in the interview. It can get it off to a really good start, right? Um, they, they're all like, wow, he's interested. He's, you know, all of that. So the other part of that with the interview is preparing for the behavioral questions, of course, right? Because basically those behavioral questions and, and what I mean by a behavioral question are those questions like, anyone have some of their favorite behavioral questions or not favorite? <laughs> um, they're, they're basically the ones that can't be answered with yes and no, right? Tell us about a time you dealt with a difficult colleague or right where you can't just, you know, or tell us about a time you, you know, failed and what you learned from that. Like these, these are questions that you have to, you know, give more information on, which is great. That's how they get more um, about, uh, you know, what you're, you know, about you and, and your experience and all of that. So, so of course, those behavioral questions, you want to think about pitching yourself and in those remember or, or you can use, and some of you may have heard this in another webinar when we talked about interviewing itself, but you can use you know, the STAR methodology, which is situation, task, action, results, or um, SOAR, situation, obstacle, action, results, whatever one you're using of those, right? Rhonda um, Anstead talks about SOAR, we've talked about STAR in the past or SCAR, but it's basically you're pitching yourself in what was the situation, very briefly, very briefly what the situation was, when I was in Peace Corps and you know, da, 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 my village, and you're, you're talking about what the, what the issue was, right? What the obstacle, there was a high level of malnourishment because of da, 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 da. What's the action you took? So we together wrote, you know, a grant for da, 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 and implement whatever it is, the action you took, and then the result. And I'm proud to, to say we were able to achieve a 10% reduction in whatever it is, right? So it's, it's pitching yourself and, and in each one of those behavioral questions. So practice those behavioral questions. Don't write out the whole answer just like don't write out the answer for tell us about yourself because trust me even if you're doing these virtual ones now and with or without camera they can tell they will tell i can totally tell when somebody's reading um a an answer you want to just have bullets so that you remember the bullet that you're going the concept but you can put it in your own words if that makes sense okay so that's what i have um i want to open it up for questions if there are any we've we've had some uh we haven't had a lot of questions today. So um, any questions on pitching in any aspect of the job search? So it could be the elevator, the interview, cover letter, you name it. Oh, Lexi, you got what brand would you be and why? Oh, I love it. What did you say? <laughs> That's awesome. I said Patagonia because I learned about it in my social entrepreneurship class about them doing a lot for the environment and it's an outdoorsy brand I kind of just winged it I was more expecting that question right was that for your current role no oh, okay I was gonna say I don't think we, I, I didn't remember asking that or, or having people ask that one um awesome all right any other questions that we have in here we have a couple minutes left and I can stay on if needed um 
any of the other folks that are on have other questions in general on the pitch? I mean, do you, do you, is there something that I didn't cover that you were hoping for that maybe I can cover in a future one or um, we always, and other topics dump in here as well. Um, if there's any other topics that you wish were, were um, covered, I'm in the process of finalizing our December schedule and I'd love to include, you know, as much as is relevant for all of you. Um, we are gonna do a session early December on uh, job searching in the holidays, bang or bust. And I'll give you a hint, it's not bust. So <laughs> come learn about the great opportunities that you have um, and how it can be actually one of the best ways or times to network, so. All right, let's see. Nice. Any other questions, folks? No problem if not. Why don't I go ahead and stop the recording? And then if you do have questions, I'm happy to um to to stay on and yeah, so that's fine. So thanks everyone for joining us and have a great day.